Now, I view also, you know, I, when I think about the Espionage Act, I, I must say I have a personal animus towards that. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's been a lifelong nemesis because 33 years after its passage in 1950, my parents were charged, tried, and ultimately executed after being indicted for conspiracy to commit espionage under the act. Now, it's no accident that my parents, as well as being charged under the act, faced a conspiracy charge. All that is required for the prosecution to prove a conspiracy is to present evidence that two or more people got together and took one act in furtherance of an illegal plan. It could be a phone call or a conversation. In my parents' case, the only evidence presented against my mother was David and Ruth Greenglass's testimony that she was present at a critical espionage meeting and typed up David's handwritten description of a sketch. Now, although this testimony has since been shown to be false, even if it had been actually true, every word of it, it would mean that the government of the United States executed someone for typing. Now, if you think about it, any political organizer that the government says is illegal becomes a conspiracy under that legal definition of conspiracy. That's why the reach of conspiracy is so insidious. It means that anyone with whom my parents could have discussed their actions and politics could have been swept up and had similar charges brought against them if someone testified that those conversations included plans to commit espionage. Thus, the case against my parents was rightly seen by many in their political community as a threat to them all. Now, almost 94 years later, after the passage of the original act, the government is rumored to be considering <coughs> indicting WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange under this law. Now, the government is also, as you know, holding private Bradley Manning without charge in solitary confinement for seven months on suspicion that he is the source of some of the materials that WikiLeaks has published. Uh, now, the modern version of the Espionage Act of 1917 now reads as follows. And there, there are many sections to this. Anybody who wants to, I, I admit I have not read the whole act. And I probably, if you want to try reading the whole act in all of its sections, it's a sure cure for insomnia. <laughs> but then you might have nightmares. Um, anyway, the modern version of this law now reads in part Whoever, for the purpose of obtaining information respecting the national defense with intent or reason to believe that the information is to be used to the in injury of the United States, causes the disclosure or publication of this material may be subject to criminal penalties. In other words, whoever wants to get a hold of information and wants to hurt <coughs> the United States and publish, publishes this can be subject to criminal penalties. Notice that the language from the original law about conveying false reports or making false statements is gone. Uh, so what Assange is being threatened with, the prosecution he's being threatened with, and Manning is being held under conditions that appear to constitute torture, that's because the government says they've revealed the truth to the people of the world. Uh, now, I think you can guess what my point is about this act. The Espionage Act of 1917 is no more than the modern version of the constructive or common law treasons the founders fought against. And bad as the current law is, Congress is seeking to make it worse. Both houses of Congress, and this was before the last election, both controlled by the Democrats, have introduced the SHIELD Act. Now, all the, the word SHIELD is all capital letters, so it probably stands for something. I don't know what it stands for. Uh, to further amend 
the 1917 law. Uh, and under this new SHIELD Act, it would be a crime for, quote, any person knowingly and willfully to disseminate classified information in any manner prejudicial to the safety or interest of the United <coughs> States. Now, can you imagine the field day our current authoritarian judiciary and Supreme Court will have interpreting what acts would be illegal because they fell under the proposed language? Certainly, what I think uh, might be prejudicial to the safety or interest of the United States is probably very different from what the Supreme Court justices think. Um, and it is apparent why the government would seek to charge Assange with conspiracy. Not only Assange on a conspiracy charge, but anyone involved in the WikiLeaks community could be swept up in a dragnet. Just as in my parents' case, the prosecutors could seek to bully some involved into ratting out others in return for more favorable treatment. This divide and conquer approach would turn individuals against each other, sow the seeds of distrust within the broader community, and intimidate others into inaction. It is a threat against political organizing in general. And this kind of attack threatens every activist. That's why I urge all people to come to the defense of Julian Assange should he be indicted for violating the Espionage Act of 1917. Now, I want to say, I don't know Julian Assange from Adam. I have no idea what kind of person he is. I support the whole WikiLeaks actions because of his actions, because of what he's done. That's the point. And all the reports we read about him as a person, whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, whether he's a jerk, uh, whatever, uh, those are all significant. But they are not the core question that I'm addressing here. Now, so I urge all of you to get on this bandwagon if it comes to this. And I have no doubt that 274-year-old Tom Kane would agree. <laughs> now, this latest edition of the law, the new threatened language, is clearly prompted by WikiLeaks and is in line with what television personalities, radio personalities, members of Congress, Secretary of State Clinton, Vice President Biden, and all of those who are calling for Assange's head. With few exceptions, Representatives of the established order have raised the alarm that the WikiLeaks material will create mayhem, threaten lives, and even world peace. Yet, as important as these revelations have been, violence has not really flared because of them. No armies are on the march, and the sky has not fallen. Uh, so why so much hysteria about this? Well. Bill, in his introduction, mentioned my brother and my Freedom of Information Act lawsuit in the 1970s. In 1974, my brother Michael and I sued 17 government agencies for all their files relating to my parents' case and under the Freedom of Information Act. And I think our experience may provide an answer to why they're all so hysterical about this. The government fought our efforts every inch of the way. It took us 11 years to force approximately 300,000 previously secret files into the public eye. But the government is still withholding, as Bill said, up to 150,000 pages. Now, our lawsuit exposed shocking governmental impropriety. But I doubt those now guarding the remaining files are protecting more dirty deeds of the FBI and the Justice Department. Today's custodians probably don't want to be born until after my parents' execution. Most likely, they are clueless about their contents, yet they continue to protect them zealously. This is because they view this material as theirs, not the people's. They are protecting governmental power 
through control of information. They pay lip service to the people's right to know as essential to a healthy democracy, but they all will fight to keep as many of their actions secret as possible. Assange and Manning's actions threaten their power, and they seek to criminalize anyone who does that. Secrecy breeds tyranny, while democracy flourishes with the free flow of information. We should support the WikiLeaks publications because people have the right to know what their government is doing. This idea is so simple, so obvious, and yet, in today's world, it is so revolutionary. You might say, it's just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we must scream bloody murder about Private Manning's detention because torture is never acceptable. Now, the elitist who are calling for Assange and Manning's blood think the world is theirs to run as they please. They are wrong. To paraphrase Tom Paine, we are all citizens of the world, and it belongs to us all. Thank you. Mm -hmm.